abdominal aortic aneurysms are a significant source of potential morbidity and mortality. Over 60,000 elective aneurysms are repaired in the United States each year. Endovascular aneurysm repair, or EVAR, is a fairly new technology. Its use is becoming more widespread. Currently, about one in three aneurysms are repaired via EVAR in the United States annually. Endoleaks are a complication associated with EVAR. Endoleaks are defined as persistent perfusion of the aneurysm sac after EVAR. These occur 10 to 20 percent of the time. About 12 percent of these endoleaks are classified as type 2. Type 2 endoleaks result from continued backflow from aortic branches such as the inferior mesenteric artery and lumbar arteries. This flow occurs retrograde into the aneurysm sac around the endograph. If flow into the aneurysm persists, it can increase in size and even potentially rupture. Management for type 2 endoleaks is usually accomplished by either endovascular embolization or percutaneous injection of the sac with thrombin. Occasionally these attempts fail. Classically, these failures have been managed by open ligation of the arteries. Our patient is a 77-year-old white male who underwent uncomplicated EVAR. On six-month follow-up CT, he is found to have a type 2 endoleak via lumbar arteries. At 12 months, the leak is still present and the aneurysm sac has increased in size. Endovascular coiling has failed on two attempts. CT angiogram shows paired lumbar arteries with persistent flow into the aneurysm sac. The contrast blush is noted posterior to the stent graft. This is at the level of the fourth lumbar vertebra. After placing the patient in the supine position, abdominal access is gained via an infraumbilical Hassan approach. This approach is chosen because we do not want to risk injury to the aneurysm with either varies needle or bladeless entry trocars. Two right-sided working trocars are placed, as shown. A left-sided trocar is placed as well for retraction. After initial inspection, the small bowel and its mesentery are retracted laterally to reveal the aneurysm. The next step of the procedure is to dissect the jejunum away from the aneurysm. This is done with judicious use of ultrasonic shears mixed with blunt dissection. This step is necessary to ensure adequate access to the inferior vena cava and lumbar arteries. The peritoneal division is extended inferiorly and to the left to provide increased exposure. Once the jejunum is completely separated away from the aneurysm, the inferior vena cava can be readily identified lying to the right of the aneurysm as shown. Blunt dissection and countertraction are now used to locate what we believe to be the correct lumbar arteries. Once we are confident of our location, a locking grasper is placed on the overlying tissue to mark position for fluoroscopic localization. Utilizing fluoroscopy and comparing it side by side to the CT angiogram, we verify that we are in the correct location. We do this by counting lumbar vertebrae on the images and noting that the tip of the grasper is at the same level as the lumbar arteries causing the endoleak on CT. The aneurysm sac is now retracted laterally to provide better exposure to the right lumbar artery. More extensive blunt dissection is performed to allow for accurate placement of the clip applier. Under direct vision, the clip applier is advanced around the right lumbar artery and fired. A second clip is placed as well to ensure complete cessation of blood flow and effective ligation of the artery. Further lateral retraction is now performed to expose the more posterior left lumbar artery. The laparoscopic dissector is now used to better expose this artery as it is much more difficult to access. Circumferential dissection is completed to ensure that the laparoscopic clips 
are placed correctly. The clip applier is now advanced around the artery and two clips are placed. The ligated lumbar arteries can now be easily seen in this final view. Four week follow up CT angiography is performed. This shows successful ligation of the lumbar arteries and correction of the type 2 endoleak as shown. CT images taken before and after the ligation demonstrate the cessation of flow through the type 2 endoleak into the aneurysm sac. In conclusion, Type 2 endoleaks can lead to significant morbidity and mortality. Endovascular and percutaneous techniques are generally effective, but can sometimes fail. Laparoscopic management of persistent type 2 endoleaks can be done safely. It provides a solid repair and has much less morbidity than the open alternative. Thank you.